It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. This is Kyle Hyman, and joining us to talk about a, a resource for particularly for women. It's called the Thoughtful Girl's Guide to Fashion, Communication, and Friendship is Mary Sheehan Warren. Thanks for being here, Mary. Thank you for having me. So this book is really interesting, and when we're talking about fashion, uh, I personally, since doing a morning show, have adopted, and I think it's been almost two years now, that I wear a a uniform. So it's a a blue button-up shirt, long sleeve in the winter, short sleeve in the summer, navy pants, brown shoes, and belt. So without seeing it, on a scale of 1 to 10, how good is my fashion? Well, fashion is all about context. So based on your description, it sounds like you are, let's say the word, better dressed than the others on radio. So um, (laughs) not bad. Not bad is what I'm going to say. How did you originally get interested in fashion? (laughs) Well, I always was interested. I always watched fashion as an industry, always was very much into dressing, but it really started for me as a vocation when I founded, I helped found a group called Elegance and Style way back in the 90s. There was uh, two fashion designers just needed somebody with the organizational and technical skills, and that was me. So the three of us created what eventually became known as Success in Style, which is a nonprofit now well over 22 years old in Savage, Maryland. And our mission is to provide suiting, um, or not just suiting, just career-appropriate attire to people who need it. It could be people coming out of prison or off the streets, people who are coming out of domestic abuse shelters and things like that, or just anybody who needs help. So we actually carry inventory of the clothing, and we teach the soft skills of the handshake, the eye contact, the bearing, the professional presence. It's very exciting work. So my work in fashion has been oriented towards professional presence, what's called personal branding and things like that. And I think what you just mentioned there is something that people don't think of whenever we think of fashion, but you get into more of uh, those, those things, uh, the communication signals of our behavior as well. So you're talking about handshakes and things like that it goes much beyond yeah. just what we're wearing. But when we're talking about clothes specifically, I think a lot of this, people might get a little worried that it's prideful or vain. So why do you think that fashion matters and uh, what would be the the Catholic perspective on fashion? Well, no one is or no one can escape fashion. Even by saying you're anti-fashion, you're still using fashion as as a marker, as a reference point. So Uh. if you around in super old styles or, um, you know, badly torn clothing, it's in a sense still a statement you're making about yourself. You're just using the tool of clothing, which is really a type of fashion. Mm -hmm. And certainly I've seen the spirit reflected in writings, just in thinking about, um, especially the theology of the body, just in thinking about ourselves in the modern world, that there is more of a need now than maybe ever before to echo that dignity that's been given to us by being created in the image and likeness of God. So that dignity or that special place we have in the order of the universe is demonstrated through our, well, most definitely through our gifts, what we've been given, our talents, our intelligence, our ability to connect connect with people through friendship. But also part of it, one strong tool is the clothing that we put on ourselves to begin those connections. People make first impressions, even the most anti-fashion. In fact, probably the most anti-fashion people make snap judgments more than than others. So we need to, you know, kind of get preempt it, get ahead of it and say, you know, I have a good attitude towards this situation. I have a good attitude towards you and I have a good attitude towards myself. So Mm -hmm. um, it's a tool. It's a tool. So, the first book that you wrote was more on fashion itself. Uh, like I mentioned, this one, The Thoughtful Girl's Guide to Fashion, Communication, and Friendship, branches into other fields. Why did you want to write this book? Exactly. Well, the first book, I was, you know, I was in my 30s when I wrote it. Actually, I think it was published in my 40s. 
And it was very much a gathering of all my experiences and working for this nonprofit. What are some of the things that I've taken for granted or, you know, my peers have taken for granted about fashion that other people have had to learn and learn the hard way? So it was written for women, I'd say, you know, 20 to 30 something, maybe 40 something market. And it's strictly practical, although I do have some depth. A reader told me that it was one of the deepest books she's ever read. So, huh. okay, if that's it, that, that's often it's an entree, I think, to deeper things. But this time around, when I thought I've been promising a follow-up book for teenagers, or at least for young women, and the more I got into it, the more I realized this is this is bigger than just scarves and sunglasses and a sheath dress. This is... This is about our being. This is about how we view our purpose and our meaning. We have to understand who we are. We have to understand our mission, what it is we want to communicate about ourselves through all these tools, including fashion, which is probably the most striking tool when we're first encountering someone. Oh, I I really had to go a lot deeper. And the first chapter of the book does exactly that. I talk about location and mission and how you're created in the image and likeness of God. And in fact, you wouldn't say it's an overtly Catholic book. I think you look in the footnotes and you can see clearly I've been influenced by John Paul II and by Edith Stein. Mm -hmm. But it, it, I would say certainly there's a, there's a Christian faith-based approach here, but anyone could pick it up. Anyone could pick it up, and, and I'm hoping that anyone who does gets it, gets that something that's important about our presence, our, our physical presentation to the rest of the world. So, um, right. yeah, I tried to make it deep, <laughs> That's for, for lack of a better term, you know, go deeply into the subject matter. Yeah. Well, definitely, I see it focusing on virtue, which could be contrary to some other books that might be similar to it, that might be focusing on, I don't know, what you can get from another person or what you can gain or, you know, working your way up a social ladder being the focus rather than virtue. Uh, how do you see this as maybe helping women with some of the obstacles that they might be facing, trying to make good choices about appearance and maybe more importantly, a behavior? Well, I go step by step. I try to be um, kind of methodical about it. So I talk about um, questions, you know, why why are you dressing the way you're dressing? What are you trying to say? And maybe to step back and think about, well, hmm, maybe what should you be trying to say? Uh And um, once you come to the conclusion that it's, you know, your fashion is much bigger than getting what you want, which is a common theme. And I've been working for clients for 25 years almost now. And one theme comes up, hey, I, you know, I really want to, I, I want to get this promotion. Or I want to get this job. So what's wrong with wearing a really tight short skirt and showing some leg? And um, well, <laughs> aside from you know, the obvious things, you have to think back to, um, well, what does that say about you? Mm-hmm. You know, what, what's taking the focal point away from your intelligence? In fact, physically, when you dress, when anyone dresses, they should attempt to keep the focal point on the face, on the eyes, the eyes is the windows to the soul, because with your connections, you're connecting with other people, you want them, obviously, to look in your eyes, and you're communicating things about your intelligence, your talents, and your sense of self-worth, your aspirations, all of these things, they're not communicated through, you know, where a hemline falls, or you know, uh, some well-placed cleavage. (laughs) It's definitely, um, you know, you're you're not, none of these places are, but you're greater than the sum of your parts. You want that focal point to stay up where you're communicating about the whole person, not just pieces. So I think that really resonates with people. Even some of my clients who have said, you know, why not just wear something short and get the job? If you really talk through it, they can see, they can see that, yeah, that that's, it's probably not even prudent. <laughs> yeah. So it, it it's definitely a process. And, you know, I'd be surprised if after one reading, there's, you know, an immediate conversion. I think what happens is you get this information, you read a book like this, and then you see it out in the world for yourself. Yeah. You watch interactions among other people and you watch the world react with you, with you yourself. You think, hmm, 
I bet you I know why he wasn't paying any attention to what I was saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I really needed to say something. So, yeah, it's a process, and um, each person takes a, a tidbit and walks with it, and hopefully they come to some of the same conclusions I have. Well, and a lot of it seems actually scientific or psychological. This is going to get this kind of a reaction or this sends this kind of a message that you might not even realizing that you're doing. And one of the things that you focus on is good communication and that being nonverbal, verbal, you know, type, text message, whatever, and what different types of communication say about you. Why do you think that's so important that you address in the book? Because I think there's a lot of miscommunication going on, and yeah. um, there's a lack of understanding. So we're receiving messages from people, and a lot of these messages are really unintended. That sometimes through a quick text that we've written, and of course that's kind of a, a micro example, you know, we send off a text, not even in anger, we're just not very clear about it, and it's completely misunderstood on the other side, mm-hmm. or especially in the professional world emails have been the undoing of all sorts of people, you know, to kind of carefully think through all these communications. Same way with fashion. Think through wardrobe choices. I get a little bit on even sustainability, you know, the idea that no choice to purchase something exists in a vacuum. That We should be conscious about what we're buying and what we're supporting. So the communications that we send out, um, I don't think I even have to prove to people that it's important to figure out how to send them out, especially after watching what happened a couple weeks ago uh, in social media, you know, the things that were being tweeted out. And this is constant. I don't have to look very far to see a complete miscommunication unfold right before our eyes online or, um, you know, in our, in our social media. So we're in a tricky time. There's more types of communication going on right now. Um, and in some ways, there's almost more to lose. Hmm. So, yeah, it's it's not a hard sell. I think people get that. Yeah. And another thing that you have in the book are these quizzes kind of scattered throughout. What do you hope women learn from these quizzes that you have? Well, most of the quizzes, in fact, I can't think of an exception, are a way, you know, a little bit of a shtick, but a way for the reader to get to know herself just a little bit better. Mm -hmm. There's other ways of doing it. Of course, I'd much rather sit down and probe and talk to someone, but I'm an author with a book, so I do it through things like quizzes. And the idea is that the reader turns away for a moment and thinks, oh, okay, all right, this this explains why I... I tend to do this, or I tend to think this way, or maybe this is why people think I think the way I do, that, that, that it, it might even be wrong. You know, people are making assumptions about the way I think, so that the quizzes are there just to uncover maybe a, just a hidden truth about the reader. Yeah. Well, it's such a, a great book. I think there's going to be a lot of people that benefit from this. I even was <laughs> learning a ton reading through it about uh, even some simple things like when you're sitting at a banquet table, the bread, your bread is on your left and your water <laughs> is on your right and and yeah. little, little mnemonics to remember that and stuff like that. So a lot of practical things of manners and behavior and communication and, of course, what you wear as well. So people should check this out. Where can they get a copy of the book and find out more about what you're doing? Well, Tan Publishers, who published my book, also my website uh, is marysheehanwarren.com, and I've got links to the old book and the new book, and of course Amazon. So um, it's, it's pretty easy to find, just the Thoughtful Girl's Guide to Fashion, Communication, and Friendship. Yes. Again, that's the Thoughtful Girl's Guide to Fashion, Communication, and Friendship. Thank you so much, Mary, for sharing this with us. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.